this video i'll be proving that the legendary symbol is equal to minus 1 to the power summation of k goes from 1 to p minus 1 by 2 and the greatest integer of k by p so this symbol is actually here the greatest integer symbol and a is also odd p is odd and the gcd of a and p is equal to 1 now as we prove this result this will help us in proving a result which we call it as quadratic reciprocity law now this is really important law in the sense that it will give us a relation between the legendary symbol where both are prime p and q both are odd primes and both gcd is equal to 1 because they both are uh, primes obviously the gcd is 1 and if you wish to change this term as q by p so it is like taking the product of these two is equal to minus 1 to the power p minus 1 by 2 into q minus 1 by 2 many people worked on this legendary's law so of course this problem was first noticed by Euler and then it was extended with some proof with some a little bit of incompleteness by Legendre and it was finally given up one proof by the Gauss. So this is another very important uh, result provided by Gauss to number theory. Now let's prove this result and in proving this particular result which is quadratic reciprocity law I'm going to first prove this result which is I'm stating now in the form of a lemma. So let's write down the lemma here. If p is an odd prime and a is an odd integer with gcd a comma p is equal to 1 then a by p that's the legendary symbol this is equal to minus 1 to the power summation of this quantity. Let us prove this result and in proving this lemma we shall be using the Gauss lemma again and consider the set S that's the set that we have used in the construction of the proof of Gauss lemma and in that Gauss lemma that I have uh, proved in my last videos we have seen that a by p legendary symbol value this is minus 1 to the power n and n is the number of integers in the set s which upon division by p whose remainder exceed p by 2 so i'm going to follow now the similar step and if i can show that this n is coming out to be summation of k goes from 1 to p minus 1 by 2 greatest integer of k a by p so basically the power if i can show that that this power is n and the remaining part i can then use by the gauss lemma and my result is proved because on the left hand side i have a by p which is fine which is given here then i have minus one the only thing remaining is that this quantity is the n so now let's proceed to prove this in this case we consider s in this form and and now let's divide each of elements in s by p and we know the element in the set is of the form this so there is a multiple of a which belong to s now i want to divide this by p so let's write k a and using the division algorithm there exists some quotient dividing by p plus there exists some remainder at this moment this remainder is obviously less than or equal to p minus 1 because we are dividing this quantity by p so if this is p the remainder is less than p minus 1 and the minimum remainder can be 1 why it can't be 0 because if k takes the value 1 so the least value expected in the set s is a belongs to s and we have already said that a and p gcd is 1 so this means the least value of the remainder can't be 0 it will start from the 1 and now after considering this i can rewrite above as divide whole by p so let's say if you divide whole by p i get the equation tk by p and if you look at this quantity tk by p the maximum value of tk is p minus 1 and the smallest is 1 so we can see there because the denominator is large in the denominator we have p so this quantity is like a fractional term it will not be an integral term because of the values that are coming in the numerator so taking greatest integer value on both sides we see this is k a by p greatest integer function and this q k is already an integer so i can write this as q k only plus this quantity is a zero because this is fractional value once i apply greatest integer function this value will turn out to be zero so this implies q k is the greatest integer of k a by p and i can replace now this value in equation number one let's call this as here as equation number one and q k is taking this value so that gives me that k a is q k which is now k a by p into p plus t k now this is the value of the elements that are appearing in s because we see that k a k a was an element of the set s okay s consists of the multiples of a now let's go back to the steps of the proof we did in the gauss lemma we started that s is a set which is a multiple of a now in this set 
if I divide this elements of this set by P. So now if I divide the elements of the set S that is divide Ka by P, I get certain remainder. So if the remainder is less than P by 2, so let's write if the remainder is less than P by 2 upon division by P, there are certain elements that is R1, R2 up till Rm that remains from the set and there are certain elements whose remainder is greater than P by 2 and let's just call that M S1, S2 up till Sn. I am using the same notation as we did in the Gauss lemma so that we have an idea we can go back and we can see that this particular step. Now considering that these are the set and in lieu of equation number 1 I said that Ka is Qk into P plus Tk and I know that Qk is the greatest integer of Ka by P. This step I have just proved. So Ka is this quantity now. And let's consider now this as equation number 2. So now when I write all these equations, considering now this as equation number 2, now start taking the sum of P minus 1 by 2 equations in 2. P minus 1 by 2 equations in 2. What I get? I get a relation of Ka. And here K varies from 1 to P minus 1 by 2. Because you can see here, I am writing now all the relations. Say so for example, k when it takes the value 1, so this means first element when divided by p, it will be something like k a, now k is 1, so it will be something like a by p times p and then there is some remainder r1. If this remainder r1 is less than p by 2, I will get 1 equations here. Then I am going to write 2 times a, the same expression, 3 times a, the same expression. How many such equation can I get? Obviously, I am going to get p minus 1 by 2 equation and that is what? I am discussing here consider the sum of p minus 1 equation. So if you sum the left hand side I get summation of k varies from 1 to p minus 1 by 2 summation k a equal to I always get this type of equation plus then there are some remainders. So let us see that now how many terms of this type also p minus 1 by 2 times k a by p times p that's the value that we can see here and plus the remainder now there are two types of the remainder either the remainder would be r1 r2 r3 or the remainder would be s1 up till sn so let's sum the remainders also rk k varies from 1 to m there are m such remainders and there are n such remainders and of course the total m plus n is p minus 1 by 2 because we have these many total equations and also we have seen that this set r1 to rm of the remainder and the another set that is S1 up till Sn. These were the remainder whose value is greater than P by 2. So if you write a corresponding set that is P minus S1 up till P minus S2 up till so on P minus Sn. This is the set whose remainder is less than P by 2. And they are incongruent to each other. Once they are incongruent to each other or above is simply a rearrangement of these integers 1, 2, 3 up till P minus 1 by 2. We can say that these are incongruent to each other. So if they are incongruent to each other, how many total number? M in this set, N in this set. So the total number of M plus N was P minus 1 by 2. So if I just simply take the summation of these numbers, that is summation of K, K varying from 1 to P minus 1 by 2. That's the summation of these numbers. This is exactly same as the summation of these numbers. They are simply the rearrangement. So summation of RK, K varying from 1 to M. First sum this term, then sum the next term, summation of P minus SK and in this case K varying from 1 to N. Now when I open this, look at this first term here which is P which is independent of K and in the sum P is coming in every summation side. So how many times P is repeating? N times because of this N plus the summation that is this one that is RK, K varying from 1 to M minus the summation xk which is here k varying from 1 to n and now let's call this as equation number and before that let me to also label the previous equation number that is 3 and here I am going to label this as equation number 4 and now subtracting 4 from 3 so we have this as equation number 4 and this one as equation number 3. So once we subtract this 4 from 3, we can see the left hand side will become k goes from 1 to p minus 1 by 2. 
here we have k and here we have k a so a comes out so this is a minus 1 because 3 minus 4 so a minus 1 inside we have this k the next term consists of p p is here also and there is a term p of this also so this will become summation k varies from 1 to p minus 1 by 2 inside i have k a by p minus n and this whole is multiplied by p this whole is multiplied by p minus we can see that there is a term rk and this rk rk both are same so this will get cancel it out now because we are subtracting 4 from 3 so this would be 3 minus of 4 so this will be actually plus 2 times summation of sk k goes from 1 to n and now just simply translate the results uh, with respect to modulo 2 classes so if p is an odd prime we have seen a is also an odd both are congruent to 1 modulo 2 so if i just translate now this last equation and let's label this also equation number 5 so equation 5 with respect to modulo 2 what will it become because we see that a minus 1 this quantity a minus 1 because of this it is congruent to 0 modulo 2 if i write in the other way this will give me a minus 1 is congruent to 0 modulo 2. And also the other quantity that is this p, this can be replaced by 1 with respect to modulo 2. So this means it is 0 into summation k, k varying from 1 to p minus 1 by 2. This is congruent to replacing by 1 p. Inside we have 1 p minus 1 by 2 k a by p minus n modulo 2 the last term is also congruent to 0 because this is already given to be 2 times something so once it is already 2 times something it is already congruent to 0 modulo 2 now this is a term which is remaining with us and in this term this is 0 and it is 1 times something with minus so let's take n equal to summation k goes from 1 to p minus 1 by 2 greatest integer of k a by p modulo 2 now this was the what we wanted to intentionally prove that if we can show that n is equal to this now we can apply simply by gauss lemma gauss lemma says that legendary symbol a by p this is equal to minus 1 to the power n and we have just shown that minus 1 to the power is summation k goes from 1 to p minus 1 by 2 greatest integer of k a by p and it makes sense with respect to modulo 2 because it is going to take only two value either it is even or it is odd so if it is this whole quantity is even i'll get legendary symbol value as plus one if it is odd i'm going to get this value as minus one and hence this lemma proves a very very important result that it converts the legendary symbol into the greatest integer power of minus one okay so because here we are uh, using some greatest integer function and with the help of this now in the next video i can prove the quadratic reciprocity law and before i end this session let's take an example to validate how we can apply this lemma let us take p is equal to 13 and a is equal to 5 we have seen many times by in the previous video also that 5 by 13 is value is minus 1 5 is quadratic non-residue of 13 let's verify here in this case we have seen that how much value a by p will take a by p is minus 1 to the power summation k vary from 1 to p minus 1 by 2 greatest integer of k a by p so the value for k runs to p minus 1 by 2 so let's see now 5 by 13 so i'm going to take the greatest integer value and till how much i need to take p minus 1 by 2 so i'll take 5 by 13 i will take 10 by 13 okay multiples of 5 and how many multiples of 5 up till p minus 1 multiples of 5 so this 15 by 13 then i'll take 20 by 13 i'll take 25 by 13 and i will take one more this is 30 by 30 so why we are taking remember i have started with the set this is 5 in, twice the multiple of 5 up till so on 6 multiple of 5 this value was p minus 1 by 2 so that is why i have only considered these one and let's see the greatest integer value of this it's very clear if the numerator is smaller than the denominator definitely the greatest integer value is 0 here for 15 by 13 it is 1 for 20 by 13 this is 1 for 25 by 13 this is 1 and for 30 by 13 this value is 2 so let's now apply this into the formula a by p this is minus 1 to the power summation of these so just write down these summations 
and I get this value as minus 1 to the power 5 and the value is minus 1. So that way we can apply this lemma to find out the Legendre symbol value. And as I mentioned earlier, this will provide us to prove the quadratic reciprocity law.